are y'all doing? Candace here from Little Steps Big Happy. I talk about health and fitness tips for moms. How's it going? I am doing okay. You know, I gotta say, today's one of those days I am digging deep to get going. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it's the end of a long week and I'm tired. I'm just tired. So I have been working very hard this morning to remind myself why it's better to just get up and do it now. Why is it better to get up and do it now? I don't know about you, but it's very easy sometimes to convince myself it'll be better to do it later. It'll be better to do it now. I don't want to, or it doesn't matter. I don't care. But later, I always still care. And then it's like, ah, oh, I don't have enough time and I'm stressed and oh, this is so hard to get done and da da da. And a lot of times, I know for myself that if I had just made the effort a little bit earlier, it would go smoother. And today's kind of one of those days. So I am working to remind myself how much better it is when I get something done early versus late and then I don't feel behind and stressed. And although it would be tempting to just put stuff off because um, I'm tired, uh, it's oh, my life goes so much more smoothly when I do stuff ahead of time, when I get my workouts done, when I think about my food ahead of time, when I do all that stuff ahead of time. Pre-planning is like the glue that holds my life together at this point. So we talk about motivation all the time, right? Sometimes... For me, today's motivation is how much will it suck if you have to do this later? <laughs> and so that is my driving force today. That will be me getting me playing my meals and doing my workout and all that stuff. So there you go. Today's motivation. Um, I'm going to hop into today's topic because I think this is kind of a good one. So today we're going to talk about five things to stop doing if you want to lose weight this year. Now, if you're thinking I'm going to be like, stop drinking sodas and don't eat processed food, I'm not. Y'all probably already know that anyways. I don't know anybody who thinks sodas are healthy, okay? So y'all probably already know a good handful of things that you could be doing to lose weight. Most people do. Eat better, right? Not pizza, not cookies. Yes, salads. Yes, soups. Lean proteins, right? That's not rocket science. But these are five things that I want you to stop doing that will allow you to eat healthy consistently throughout the year, long term here, okay? Not quick fixes, but weight loss that comes off and stays off. So, number one, don't do weight loss plans that make you miserable. If you hate it today, you're probably going to hate it later. There is a difference between something that feels challenging but doable, a change, but I could probably work this for a little while versus this sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? This sucks. Thinking about doing it makes me cringe on the inside. Uh, let's see. Let me think about some examples, right? Because there's some diets out there where I'm like, oh my God, that, that's all I get to eat or that's what I have to eat or I got to put how much work into it. If those thoughts are running in the back of your mind, then this is probably not the weight loss plan for you. Because even if it's effective, even if tons of other people have lost weight on it, if the idea of doing it requires a huge amount of will plan, willpower, energy, discipline, motivation for you to stick with it, think about are you really going to be able to stick with that long term? Because whatever you do to lose weight, you're going to have to do to keep it off. Maintenance does not like this magical place that now you can eat whatever you want. Okay. Trust me. <laughs> you have to do probably about 90 to 95% of the th same things you do to lose weight to maintain that weight loss. So if you hate this weight loss plan, which you're on, if you hate the workouts, if you hate the diet, you're going to hate it when you're in maintenance too. If you even make it far enough to far enough to lose your weight. Okay. Cause most of us, you know, myself included, trying diets that I really didn't enjoy, that I really didn't like, that didn't fit my lifestyle, I didn't stick with them very long. So maybe I lasted a few weeks, or maybe, you know, if I was really good, I lasted a few months, but I could never maintain it long enough to get where I wanted to be and stay there. So if the diet you're trying, or the weight loss plan, whatever you're trying, if you're like, oh my goodness, I could not see myself doing this very long, you need to find something else. You need to try something different. You need to look around. There are a 
ton of weight loss plans out there that you can try and a lot of them are fairly successful so you need to do some more research figure out something that's going to work better for you you know ask around ask your friends ask what's working for me talk to me I've tried a lot of them I know some things that work very well I know some ones that people tend to crash and burn on so ask around get some more information because if the one you're looking at right now <coughs> sorry if the one you're looking at right now makes you be like oh this is probably not the one for you you're probably going to have a really hard time sticking to it long term and you're not going to be able to stay consistent which means even if it works for other people it probably won't work for you and that's okay it just means you need to look around some more all right number two stop not having a plan at all a a lot of us want to hope we'll find time so we hope we'll find time to get our workouts in we hope we're gonna try to eat healthier but that's not the same thing as having a plan of how you're going to do it having a plan is a type of commitment to yourself having a plan is thinking ahead deciding ahead of time knowing what you're going to do and then trying to follow that and that's very different than okay so I woke up today and I, ha I have no idea what I'm gonna eat I don't know what's in the fridge I haven't gone to the grocery store I haven't even thought about what my schedule is gonna look like today I'm just gonna hope I make healthier eating choices that's very different than deciding okay so this week Ooh, sorry. Ooh, sorry, sneezes. Man, I'm a mess today. <laughs> so that is very different than being like, okay, so this week I want to have oatmeal for breakfast and maybe a couple smoothies. And so I'm going to make sure that before the week even starts, I've hit the grocery store. I've made a list. I've bought all the ingredients I need to eat that for breakfast this week. And so then I'm going to try really hard to make these eat these healthy choices that I already have available for myself, right? Like that is a very different plan and having a plan versus hoping I'm going to get around to it. You're going to hope that you're going to decide at the end of a long day when your kids are driving you crazy, when your husband said something stupid, when you're tired and cranky and just waiting till everybody goes to bed, right? So you can get those few minutes by yourself hoping that then you're going to have enough mental energy to be like, well, what do I want to eat? Well, what's healthy that the kids will actually eat? Well, what do I have on hand? Do I have the recipe for that? Oh, I'm missing this one ingredient. Let me run to the store. Yeah, no, not happening. You're ordering a pizza, you're kicking your heels up, and you're resolving to try again tomorrow, okay? But when you have a plan, when you already know what you're going to have, when you have the ingredients on hand, when you know the recipe already, then you just get it done. And that is why having a plan is just so stinking useful. Because most of us, I ain't made a mom yet who doesn't have a lot going on, who's not got somebody talking to her, needing something for her or something waiting to be done pretty much every minute of every day. And so our health and fitness, it's so easy to put on the back burner when everything else is pulling us in 20 different directions. You have to have a plan ahead of time if you want to stick with it. So make those plans, ladies. All right, number three, trying to completely overhaul your life overnight. Please, please stop doing this. I recognize that when you decide to start losing weight and you're looking at it and you're learning information, it's very easy to be like, oh my goodness, here's all the things that I'm doing wrong. I'm gonna start doing all of those right and then I'll be good. But that goes completely against human nature, okay? I mean, if you like look into some behavioral stuff, okay? That is so hard to do and be consistent. Kind of like I just talked about before, most of us already have a lot going on on our plate. Like, even if I take, just set health and fitness stuff aside over here, I got tons of crap that exhausts me and stress me out and overwhelm me every day, right? Like none of that stuff, your life is not gonna disappear just because you want to lose weight, okay? You're still going to have all your other responsibilities. And so when you decide to change everything, you decide to change eating habits and behaviors that you've practiced for decades, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of work, a lot of willpower, a big struggle. And it's so a lot of us are not successful at all. And then we feel frustrated and defeated and we're like beating ourselves up about it because we're like, oh man, every time I do this, I just never stick to it and I can't work, you know, I don't have enough mo willpower, I'm lazy, I don't have enough motivation, yada, 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 right, all the things. And a lot of that is because you're trying too much too soon. So you don't need to change your entire diet from eating whatever you want to 
now you know you're only eating something that's super healthy within these this calorie restriction and yada 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 like that is super hard to do you need to baby step your way in there okay like you need to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that make a small change that you can stick with and then add another one and then add another one and it's like as opposed to trying to climb the side of a mountain you're taking the staircase you're still going to get there you're still eventually going to be eating <coughs> sorry excuse me you're still eventually going to be getting where you hope to be but you're allowing yourself to build up to it and when you do that it is so much more successful and consistent you're going to feel so much more confident about your ability to do it you're going to feel a lot more motivated because you feel like you can do it and you're successful and you're making it and well look you know i started out where you know i was only exercising two days a week and that was you know it didn't feel like enough but it was all i could do and then now i'm up to three and now i'm up to four and you know next week i'm gonna try five but when you do that like it's so much more really successful and consistent and it's going to get you better results because you'll actually be able to stick with it a perfect plan that you don't follow because it's too big of a change for you doesn't do you any good the only plan that is even a, a little bit useful is the one you're going to stick with. So stop trying to change everything overnight. Give yourself the time to adjust to your new habits a little bit at a time. And you're going to be able to adapt them and keep them and stick with them and then eventually build on them. But you have to recognize what you're actually going to stick with and follow through with now so that you can start creating a successful plan for yourself you know okay <coughs> sorry i'm at the tail end of a cold y'all and so like i'm i'm almost out of it but i still a little froggy in the morning so number four perfectionism stop trying to be perfect with this stuff no one is no one is and one more time for those in the back no one sticks to their diet perfectly no one sticks their exercise routine perfectly i promise you no one does and so what that means is if you're thinking this is what you need to do to be successful to lose weight and to get in shape you're going to want to give up the first time you mess up or you're going to think something's wrong that you messed up and that it's not working and that's not the case this is a natural part of the process because you're creating new habits you're changing old patterns and like i mentioned before some of the stuff you might have been doing for decades like i sure was i had to unravel eating habits and thought processes and patterns and behaviors that i had done my entire life and so now it's it, it's not like you could just flip a switch and be like okay i want to eat better so now that i do if that was the case none of us would have a weight problem because we would have fixed this a long time ago you know so it takes practice and time to create these habits and adopt them and actually really keep them and stick with them and not have to pour a ton of mental energy into following through on them that takes practice it's like a skill like anything else weight loss i really feel like is a skill you know it's a skill learning how to eat better it's a skill learning how to exercise it's a skill learning how to motivate yourself and retrain the way your brain thinks about these things so that you follow through on it but in that process of building that skill you're going to have off days. You're going to have times where you overeat. You're going to have times where you, you know, you eat off plan. You're going to have times where you get to the end of a long day and you're just like, forget it. I don't care. And it's not that we don't like, it's not that we just ignore when that happens, but there's a very big difference between being like, okay, this happened. It wasn't what I was intending. I need a better plan for next time versus, well, now that I messed up, I might as well eat everything in the fridge because I'm already off my plan. And if I don't do it perfectly, it's not going to work anyways, or it doesn't matter, or it's not good enough. That's a thought that a lot of us who are striving for doing it perfectly have in our head. That if I don't do the best one exactly right, then it doesn't matter. It's not going to work. It doesn't count. So why bother? You know, either why bother trying it all, or why bother eating well the rest of the day when I'll just have to start all over tomorrow, you know, or start all over at the beginning. And... A lot of times we'll get stuck in that cycle of start, stop, start, stop, start, stop because we're aiming to do it exactly right and that's how it's going to work. And I'm here to tell you, it's not required. It's not necessary. And if anything, it's really just delaying you getting to where you want because you're going to make mistakes. But if you make that mistake, catch yourself and then immediately get back on track, you're going to be so much further along than if you make your mistake, catch yourself, be like, well, forget it, it's messed up anyways, I'll have to start all over, and then you have to backtrack. 
and then you go here and back, right? You're not actually getting forward when really mistakes are part of the process. I've been doing this for years. I'm pretty good at it at this point, and I still have days where I'm just like, well, crap. I overate, or I went and grabbed the bag of chips instead of going and getting the healthier option out of the fridge, okay? Like that is just a part of creating new habits, creating new skills, changing your eating habits and behaviors and all that stuff. So don't think it needs to be perfect. You know, instead of working on trying to be perfect, I mean, of course, you do your best to stick with your plan. That is always, always the goal. But if you don't, don't let it mean that it's not working. Just know, here's an area for me to work on. Let me try to, let me, let me come up with a better plan for how to handle this next time. And then you look for your very next best decision. And that's it. Like that's literally all there is to it. When you can drop that drama and that expectation that if I don't do it right, every single time it's not going to work, you will be shocked and amazed at how much progress you'll start making from there. How much more progress you'll start making, how much more consistent, how much more skills that you're going to learn and build. Like it makes a huge difference. Okay. Last one, last thing, number five that you need to stop doing if you want to lose weight this year is eating with distractions. So a lot of, I mean, not a lot of, I believe that the biggest reason people, you know, gain weight is because they overeat. And so every single diet out there is working on curbing the overeating and learning and teaching you how to eat only as much as your body needs for energy, you know, and there's a ton of different ways to do, <coughs> sorry, there's a ton of different ways out there to do with, you know, there's calorie counting, you know, Weight Watchers, Noom, all the things, you know, but a lot, what I have found to be super, super useful in working on portion control without feeling as restricted or deprived or miserable and just like, I want more, I want more when you're done, is to eat without distractions. Because a lot of times when we're eating, we are reading a book, playing on our game, scrolling Facebook, driving, rushing through. And when we get done, we're like, I want more. I want more. I'm not done. I don't feel done. I want more. But when you slow down the eating process, when you're paying attention to food, when you're really tasting it, you're really chewing it, you're really enjoying the food you're actually eating, right? This thing that a lot of us were like, man, I, I love food. I really want to eat food. But then when we're eating it, we're not even paying attention to it. You know, but when you really sit down and actually experience your food, you're going to notice a lot faster when you get done, right? Like you're going to notice when you're done versus I'm eating until I, I, I feel uncomfortable or I'm overfull or now I feel stuffed, right? Like that's actually overeating. But when you sit there and you really pay attention to your food and you actually taste every bite, you get to enjoy it a whole lot more. You're going to notice when your body is done and it's a lot more satisfying the experience of the food because they're like, okay, wow, I really tasted every bite of this bowl of ice cream that I've been looking forward to today versus I ate it so fast. I didn't even taste it. And now I want more, you know, and when it comes to eating things in moderation, this is a huge help because it's like, oh, I really want this tree. I can't wait to have it. But then I didn't even bother to pay attention while I'm eating it. And so I don't feel satisfied. I don't feel like I got enough of it. When you sit there and you pay attention to every single bite that you eat because you have your phone's not on, you're not walking around, you're not doing all the other things. When you get to the end, you're like, okay, yeah, I really enjoyed my food because I actually paid attention to it. And so it's so much easier to move on about your day. So I'm going to give you a quick recap because that was a little bit of information. Number one, stop following diet plans that make you miserable and that you hate. Two, stop not having a plan. You need a plan in place so that you can follow through with it consistently. Three, ugh, try not to overhaul your life. Stop doing that. Build your habits in slowly. Four, stop expecting yourself to be perfect. We're human. Mistakes are a part of the process. And five, stop eating with distractions, okay? When you let those things go, you're going to be so much more successful with your weight loss. I hope y'all are doing well. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.